All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I wonder why do I drink coffee when I can wake up and watch a video like this, and it just gets my blood boiling. It really does. So this guy, he's um, he's sharing a sermon from Charles Spurgeon. And he starts off by quoting Isaiah 31. So let's read Isaiah 31, verses 4 and 5. For thus has the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. He will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Now this fella is saying that what's going on today in the Middle East is being applied here, that God is protecting those people that full-on reject Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. I won't play the video for you, but if you wanted to look for yourself, that's exactly what he says. He's comparing this to modern-day Israel. And uh, those people uh, that practice Judaism, if you want to call it that, call themselves Jews. He says that this is what's happening today is that God is protecting these people that reject Jesus Christ and why 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 would God do that God now this is Old Testament right the Old Testament uh, nation of God is not the same as the New Testament nation of God and so this doesn't apply to a nation that full-on rejects Jesus Christ uh, this was, would always represent God's people. And today, in 1948 Israel, it's not God's people. It's people that full-on reject Jesus Christ. And what he's saying is that God is fighting people that reject Jesus Christ to protect people that reject Jesus Christ. It's insane. It's not, what, it's not applicable to modern-day Israel. All right? And... Uh, so this just gets my blood boiling. Um, I had to stop it right there. I don't know if it shows. I had to dislike, comment, and ask, what are you talking about? You think Isaiah 31 is talking about protecting people that full-on reject Jesus Christ? God protects us that believe in Jesus, not those that reject Jesus. What is this? And that's what I would like to know. What is this? What are you teaching? You're teaching that... Uh, People that reject Jesus Christ are God's people. Well, and who are we that believe in Jesus Christ? Um, it, so, you know, uh, we could take a look at a couple of verses here. I know there's a lot of people, strangely enough, that think Jews are God's people. And uh, it's ridiculous and here in uh, Matthew 21, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. He's talking about uh, going from a physical nation to a spiritual nation. Talking about uh, given to a nation, the Christian nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. All right. So let's look at, uh, you know, God is not a respecter of persons, right? And, I mean, this is simple basic Bible stuff, I think. But, uh, let's see. Uh, My brethren have not faith, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. So you're saying that James 2, 1 is wrong and that we should have respect for people that that are born with a big nose or whatever, you know, however you want to classify. doesn't make any sense to me. And so, for there is no respect of persons with God. If there is no respect of persons with God, 
why would we be respecting people? <clears throat> excuse me, with you know, born uh, a cert with a certain ethnicity or whatever you want to call it. But uh, so, what about flesh and blood? Uh, I don't know if I got the right. There's yeah, I better narrow this down a little bit. So. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. All right, so, um, so flesh and blood does not enter or inherit, excuse me, the kingdom of God. Then why are you saying <clears throat> that these people that are just born, I mean, they're born of the same blood that? I'm born with. They're born with the same flesh that I'm born with. They have the same flesh and the same blood as me and you. So why would you think they're special and and I'm not? I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been born of the Spirit of God. Why are they more special than me? Because they live in that land? Just because they live in that lane, well, then uh, we should be encouraged to all move to that land if that's what's going to save and protect us. I mean, everybody that's a Christian should be living there, but nobody that's a Christian lives there. In fact, you know, I've been talking about this for the last couple of days. Jesus says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with the child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for there shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So, if you think about this, uh, Jesus is saying, get out of there. Get out of Judea. And, and that's in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. So if Jesus is saying, get out, and, but you are saying those people in this land are protected, you got a conflict. You don't know what you're talking about. You're trying to equate Old Testament Jews with uh, the Jews of today. And uh, so yeah, this just boils my blood. It really does. So how would you, how would you preach that? And with any understanding whatsoever. And of course you read, uh, you know, we could go to Revelation 3. I'm just going to make two more points here. Uh, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So who's he talking about here, which say they are Jews and are not, huh? Uh, the synagogue of Satan. All right, so, and then one more point here. And this is unbelievable. And when it's talking about uh, who killed the Lord Jesus, okay, I guess you you have to understand who killed Jesus, even as they have of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. <laughs> Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. Now think about this. These people God are protecting. God protects those people who are killing the prophets killing our Lord Jesus, preventing us from preaching the gospel that the, that the Gentiles might be saved, and so on and so forth. God's protecting them. That's what you're saying. And they're God's holy people, and those of us that believe in Jesus Christ are not God's holy people. That's what you're preaching. That's unbelievable. And how in the world you could call yourself a Christian and preach this stuff is beyond me. 
unbelievable. 